In this video, I'm giving you an update on FX322, which could be the first drug to successfully reverse sensory neural hearing loss. Coming up. Hi guys, Cliff Olson, Doctor of Audiology and Founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And on this channel, I cover a bunch of hearing related information to help make you a better informed consumer. So if you're into that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to click the bell to receive a notification every time I post a new video. About six months ago, I released a video about a new exciting drug called FX322, which may be the first drug ever to actually reverse sensory neural hearing loss. And if you haven't seen that video, I will go ahead and link it in the description. However, there have been some new developments, including evaluating the long-term effectiveness of FX322 and the biopharmaceutical company Frequency Therapeutics progressing into phase 2A of their clinical trials for FX322. For a little bit of background, the drug FX322 was developed with the goal of regrowing or regenerating hair cells inside of the cochlea, which is our hearing organ. If successful, it could result in hearing improvement for individuals who have sensory neural hearing loss, which happens to be the most common form of hearing loss. During phase 1A of clinical trials, which is designed to determine the safety of FX322, they also identified a statistically significant improvement in word recognition scores, as well as slight improvements in hearing thresholds at 8000 Hz. This suggests the drug's ability to successfully restore some inner and possibly even outer hair cell function with a single injection of FX322 through the eardrum onto the round window of the cochlea. Rightfully so, this has created a lot of excitement inside of the hard of hearing community because of the potential promise of restoring the natural function of the cochlea. So the question is, what has been going on since the completion of the first clinical trial? Well, during the COVID-19 pandemic, Frequency Therapeutics has been busy doing two things. First, they've been bringing back individuals who went through the first phase of clinical trials to see if the benefits they received are being maintained long term. The second thing that they're doing is actually recruiting for and starting phase two of their clinical trials. To determine the longer term effects of FX322, an additional evaluation was conducted on the five subjects who saw improvement in their word recognition scores and their 8000 Hz thresholds 13 to 21 months following the first clinical trials. What they found was that four out of the five original participants maintained the level of benefit that they received from FX322, and three out of those four maintained a statistically significant level of improvement. This suggests that even with a single dose of FX322, that most individuals who received benefit from the drug were able to maintain their level of benefit for up to 21 months. Now that is fantastic news, but what about this next phase of clinical trials? Well, the enrollment for phase 2A of 95 subjects was completed in September of 2020. This phase of clinical trials is what I find to be the most exciting because even though they're still continuing to see if this drug actually has a good safety profile, they're now starting to look at the actual efficacy of the drug. First and foremost, the phase 2A trials with 95 subjects will take seven months to complete, and the final subject is expected to complete the trial in April of 2021. The subjects in the phase 2A trial will be randomly placed into one of four groups. Group one will receive one dose of FX322 and three placebo doses that will not have the active FX322 drug. Group two will receive two doses of FX322 and two placebo doses. Group three will receive four doses of FX322 with no placebo doses. The fourth and final group will receive no doses of FX322 and four placebo doses. This is what we call a control group. Each group will receive one injection one week apart from each other, and then they will be evaluated over the course of six months. This will allow frequency therapeutics to identify whether or not increasing dosage has a larger impact on restoring cochlear function. Just like phase 1A trials, for any one of these subjects to be included in this study, they had to have had a stable sudden sensory neural hearing loss or noise-induced hearing loss for at least six months. However, the subjects have mild to moderately severe sensory neural hearing loss with word recognition scores that are significantly lower than the individuals in the first clinical trials to see if word recognition improvement could be even greater because a lot of the individuals with mild hearing loss in the first clinical trials scored 45 out of 50 words correct, which means that there wasn't a whole lot of room for improvement. 
Frequency Therapeutics is also incorporating some standardized outcome questionnaires like the HHIA, which is the Hearing Handicap Inventory for Adults, and the TFI, which is the Tinnitus Functional Index. So they can see if there's actually some subjective improvement in hearing ability, as well as with tinnitus perception. In the future, they will also be looking to expand these groups to include individuals with age-related hearing loss, otherwise known as presbycusis. If positive results are seen in phase 2A of these clinical trials, which we would expect to become available in the second quarter of 2021, then we expect frequency therapeutics to start phase 3A clinical trials and even apply for breakthrough designation with the FDA. Breakthrough designation is given to drugs that are intended to solve an unmet medical need where there are no other drug therapies available. This can essentially speed up the clinical trial process, much like the fast-track designation that Frequency Therapeutics received in their earlier clinical trials. Since there are no drugs currently available to treat sensory neural hearing loss, Phase 3 will not technically look at FX322 in comparison to another drug. It will actually just compare itself to a placebo to determine how effective it is. Phase 3 clinical trials will be even larger and will be used to determine whether or not the FDA approves FX322 as the first drug to treat sensory neural hearing loss. Overall, this is some pretty exciting news for individuals who have hearing loss because it means that there is some promise that at some time in the next decade, we could see our first therapeutic drug to actually treat hearing loss. Of course, until that time arrives, if you have sensory neural hearing loss, the best thing that you can do is to create some auditory stimulation with hearing aids. Not only will this improve your ability to hear and communicate right now, but it may lead to an even better outcome if and when FX322 becomes available. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you liked the video, please share it. And if you want to see other videos just like this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, feel free to check out my website, drcliffaud.com.